We found a way to keep family memories alive forever. Meet a woman who's working hard to do just that. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Fox 43 studio in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on family memories and we're visiting with Betty Cox. Good morning. Good morning, Betty. Thanks How so much you? for getting in. I'm doing great. Thanks Thank for you. making the trip down from the uh, PD. It was a very pleasant drive this morning, but I was very impressed with the new mall. Yes. How about that coastal grand it's mall? It's not open yet. It opens in 48 hours. Oh, great. It'll open on Wednesday morning, St. Patrick's Day. I so won't be it's, uh, here, but I'll be back. You'll have to get back. It's amazing. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, Stacy Dickerson, their marketing director, will be with us uh, talking about the, the opening of the mall. And then on, on the day of the opening, we've got a couple of folks in uh, from SCORE, the uh, small business uh, development group, mm -hmm. and another gentleman who recently put out a book that SCORE helped him on. So it's an exciting week. So glad to get you and your Thank husband you. down. and. So exciting to learn about family memories and learn a little bit about yourself. Well, ask me a question. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> about yourself, but are you originally from the area? I was born in Florence. I'm one of those few people that I know that was born there and stayed there after high school. I did go to a little bit of college. Francis Marion University is there now, but it started out as part of the University of South Carolina system, and when I attended, that's what it was. But unfortunately... I dropped out of college to get married and uh, never went back. Mm -hmm. But I have stayed in the Florence area. Mm. Been there all my life. So you're a Florentine by I'm birth. I'm a Florentine. That's exciting. Last uh, Thursday and Friday we had a visitor, uh, Ed Young, former congressman Friend from the of PD ours. area. That's right. From uh, I guess that was old district, what, 6 or 1? He was the congressman for District 6. Right. That Jim Clyburn's seat, you know, he's holding yeah. that seat right now. But when... Ed was in that seat. It was a much different um, shape, much mm -hmm. different outline, covered a lot more territory geographically than it does today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was essentially and the PD and the Strand. That's yes, right. it was. It was. Right, and I guess he's uh, a, a fine man. He's just a wonderful asset to our community, and he's a friend of ours. He actually he talked about flying his plane. Right. He still flies. Oh, yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, he called us up and told us to be at the airport at such and such a time. We went went up with him, and he let my husband, Tim, who is blind, by the way, take over the plane and fly it. Oh, well, and I had my camera safe. with me. We took a lot of photographs from the air. Oh, he, you know, he was giving him instructions right, the right, whole time, right, but it sure. was a thrill. No, I mean, you mentioned that he's blind and that he took over, but I, but now Tim mm. sees a good bit, though. No, he doesn't. Is that right? Well, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't get that feeling meeting him because he That's sure is congenial. Would. Absolutely. Sure it reaches out. It I enjoy it hearing, hearing Ed. He was a superstar. Well, I hope you got to catch both days on, uh, on on Thursday. We went into so much and learned a lot about farming and the PD and how right. that's changed dramatically. And, of course, Friday. He talked about not being a very good farmer, but that is certainly not true. He had a prize-winning cow. There's actually a, st a historical marker on the highway in front of his house. Right. So many gallons of milk produced from that one cow uh -huh. that was uh -huh. a record. He's an excellent farmer. Oh yeah, that there's and, and a picture of that cow is up in the little uh, the little side house mm -hmm. off of the house there sure on uh, 76. It's a great location. Now, what's prompted you to stay in in Florence your whole life, Betty? Well, my whole family, going back for many generations, has been in the same general area of South Carolina. I started doing my father's family tree several years ago, which is what led us really into family memories, which is more of a biography type service. Mm -hmm. But I discovered that back in 1716, um, an ancestor was one of the signers of the petition to make South Carolina a crown colony. Mm. He later settled in what is now the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. um, but my family, on both sides, my parents' families have been in South Carolina for generations, and I really love it. Just never was tempted to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a special area. It really is. And I saw that you and Tim married in 1984, and yes, that uh, you all launched Executive Services of the PD in, I think, 1986. That's true. What exactly is Executive Services of the PD? We are a full-service secretarial service. People come to us with their work, and we do it in-house. We don't send people out. It's not a temporary 
temporary service. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we've had lots of employees. We do almost anything except in the past, we've never done graphics, but we've done anything that could be done on a computer from mm -hmm. typing term papers to resumes, a lot of medical transcription, book manuscripts, cover letters, mm -hmm. anything and everything that someone who walked in needed to have done. Mm-hmm, which of course was a great, uh, a great predecessor to launching Family Memory. Yes, it was. We had all the equipment, the printers and the computers and fax machines, scanners, the whole nine yards. Actually, Family Memories is a pretty natural outgrowth of our interests. I was interested in Family Tree, Tim's family, a lot of that had already been done by others. And a couple of Christmases ago, an in-law showed us a book Someone had interviewed the elder members of his family, two ladies, I believe they were both his aunts, about their life growing up. It's a little mini biography. What did they remember about their parents, their grandparents, aunts and uncles, the culture, the economy, their faith, the geography of the land they lived in? What did they do for a living? What were their likes and dislikes and loves and, and about their faith? He told him and me, there's no reason why you can't do this. Mm -hmm. You need to do this, and you need to do this for your own families while you still have the older members of your families with you. Now, my parents died many years ago. All my grandparents had been dead for a long time. Tim's mother and daddy were still living at that time, and we thought it was a wonderful idea. However, we were busy. However, everybody I know is already busy, booked way up with their, um, their families and their businesses and their extracurricular activities, whether it's church or civic groups or whatever, and we didn't do it right away. Well, the following year, Tim's daddy, who was 90, became ill and then died. Mm. We never had the opportunity to ask him those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. um, daddy, what was life like when you were a child? What do you remember about grammar school? Tell me about your grandmama or your granddaddy. Mm -hmm. We never asked him any of those questions, but after that, we took it seriously, and we did a project for Tim's mom. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. We've gotten interviews. She's got an excellent memory. She had lots of photographs. We asked her all these questions and have gotten through about the time she met Tim's daddy when they were just wrong? dating. Mm -hmm. So we'll do another book this summer. We did that one, and it's a very thick, about two and a half, three inches thick, everything we've done so far. Mm -hmm. Basically, a verbatim interview. I have lots of questions. I'm snoopy. I'm curious. I, I like to pick. And we just sit there and ask and ask and ask and ask. And when she get tired, we quit. Yeah. Come back another day. That is exciting. Now, do you all do any of this on video, or is this almost exclusively audio? We have the, we have the, um, the way to do it on video. Mm -hmm. Tim's daughter can help us in that field. She's mm -hmm. an... Uh, graphics artist. She has video equipment. What we have done so far is strictly on audio, mm -hmm. but we also incorporate photographs, old family photographs, new photographs. Mm -hmm. Now, we have done several other projects since the one we did for Tim's mom. Mm -hmm. One of the ones that we did, and you will see a sample of it, was for a, an old friend of Tim's. He lives on a huge 3,000 acre farm. He grew up on that farm. They had the actual framed land grants in his living room. Mm -hmm. The house that he lives in was built in 1850. I took a photograph of the house, a close-up shot of it, and one a long shot showing the beautiful trees with the, the moss hanging off the trees. Yeah. He wanted this project, he wanted his children to understand what it was like growing up on a working farm because they're in business, they're not farmers themselves. Mm -hmm. And he also wanted to talk a lot about the tobacco industry. It's totally different today than it was when he was growing up. Mm -hmm. We went down to a local um, area. It wasn't owned by him at the time, but it was an old tobacco barn that was still standing. Mm -hmm. Flu-cured tobacco. I don't know if you're old enough to remember flu-cured tobacco. Or if tobacco. I grew up in the wrong place. That's right. Maybe yeah. so. Uh -huh. We took photographs of the barn and of him. And he explained all of the details about how tobacco was raised and then how it was cured and how it was taken to market. Mm -hmm. Took us down the road a little ways to an old tenant house, no longer occupied, it's been vacant for many years, and also an old pack house, and explained why 
they existed, what they did. And then we also did part of his family tree as a project for him. Mm -hmm. No one had actually done it in a computerized form. He gave us the names and the dates and the, the information about all of his relatives that he could remember. He told a really cute story about his granny. His grandmother was much younger than his grandfather. Mm -hmm. She was 20, came to visit. His grandfather, still single at age 50, fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. They eventually got married. Mm -hmm. But she would talk about Cousin Robert, and she meant Robert E. Lee. Mm. No one ever took her seriously. But as a gift to him, this is Tim's friend, I went on the Internet and did a lot of research into their family trees. I used the information he had provided for me and the information that's out there about Robert E. Lee and mapped both of their family trees and discovered she really was Robert E. Lee's cousin. No. She was his third cousin. My Lord. Uh, Robert E. Lee was 70 when she was 20, but they were indeed cousins. Mm. And I gave that to this fella as a gift. He was very touched, thrilled, and grief-stricken all at the same time that they had never taken his grandmother seriously about Robert E. Lee being her cousin. Right. Golly, that must be so powerful, Betty, to, for yes, folks to experience this in the fir at the first time to see exactly what you all are doing on a beginning to end basis or even in the middle of the process and right. be able to experience that as it goes along. And just to know that if anything even happened to the person who's being uh, reflected mm. upon during the process, the fact that you all had begun the process is so valuable. You know, we think no one is interested in us. We live very ordinary lives because we just do what everybody we know does. All the people we grew up with and went to school, they just grow up, go to college, get a job, get married, have a family, you know, same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like that, right? They're mm -hmm. not interesting. Well, your children think it's interesting. Your grandchildren will think it's interesting. Someday they're going to want to ask some questions about what you remember about your parents and your grandparents. Mm -hmm. I can't ask those kinds of questions of my family because they're all gone. Now, I remember from my mother telling me, my daddy died in 1960 and mother died in 1970, but I remember from mother telling me, in World War II, my daddy was a glider pilot. I don't know if, if a lot of people know what a glider even is today, but in World War II, they would use gliders that had no engines to fly them into enemy territory for, to gather information, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The unit he was in was scheduled to go overseas to Europe, and he got very, very ill. Wound up in the hospital when his unit was shipped out, and he was the only one to survive because all the rest of them came down behind enemy lines and were all killed when they landed. Mm. Uh, Ed Young was a glider pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, not Ed Young, um, Strom Thurmond. Mm -hmm. Strom Thurmond was a glider pilot. So my daddy survived the war basically because he had gotten sick and wasn't able to ship out with his unit. Mm. I would love to ask him questions about all of that, but when he was alive, I didn't have time. I wasn't really interested. I didn't really care. I thought there'd be plenty of time, mm -hmm. really and truly. Mm -hmm. Well, then my grandparents lived on a little farm, and I guess I thought they'd always been farmers all their lives long. I spent a lot of my summers as a child on the farm with them, but I played. There's lots to do on a farm. Uh, some of it's work. Mm. I actually did pick cotton, got paid for the little bit I picked. I picked mm -hmm. maybe four or five bushes worth of whatever you call a cotton plant. Um, I wasn't really interested too much in them. You know, they were grown-ups. All they were good for was giving you money and snacks and mm -hmm. food and providing you with toys and things like that. But I have discovered in recent years that my granddaddy wasn't always a farmer. He was a railroad man. Hmm. And when the um, Depression came along, he was working for the railroad in Florida. He was from this area, but or from the area I live in. But when the Depression came along, the railroad had to lay off a tremendous number of people. What he did was he bought an old truck, and he became a merchant a vegetable, fruit, it's called, he called it a truck farmer, according to an uncle of mine. 
he would load up citrus fruit from Florida, drive all the way far, as far north as up, up in North Carolina, mm -hmm. selling to markets. Mm -hmm. Then he would load produce from that area and come back to Florida, stop along the way, and sell the produce to these same markets. Oh, wow. yeah. Eventually, his family got sick and tired of it, and they wanted to go home. So they all came back to South Carolina, and he bought the little farm that I remember. But he had... He had not been there very many years when I came along. Mm -hmm. I never got a chance to ask him all those kinds of questions. Granddaddy, mm -hmm. tell me about the railroad. What did you do on the railroad? Mm -hmm. What was it like? And that's what we're helping people do, capture their memories of their children, um, of their childhood, mm -hmm. for their children and for their grandchildren. They might remember things about their parents and grandparents. It's an entirely different culture. Right different economy, different lifestyle, everything's different. The house they lived in, the house Tim's mother grew up in did not have a kitchen indoors. Well, if you're my age or older, and I'm not going to tell you exactly how old I am, <laughs> you probably know about those houses. They did not have a kitchen. Now, Greg, tell me, why didn't the house have a kitchen? Uh, didn't want to burn it down. I'm not sure. That's exactly the point. They didn't right? want to burn it down. The kitchen would be a whole different building. It would be so many yards from the main house in case of fire. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. And she grew up in a house that did not have a kitchen. Mm -hmm. We have a sketch. I have made a little outline of what the house was like because that house has been gone for many, many years. Mm -hmm. But that's a, a lifestyle people would like to know about. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, you go back, as you said, so many of our peers or otherwise are in their own lives. They just don't have time to do mm -hmm. something like this. The old mantra of why put off till tomorrow, but you can do the day after tomorrow. Exactly I mean, it's, uh, right. there's a We're lot of putting guilty. off, a lot of procrastination. I'm sure it's that aspect of just getting it started. It's so valuable. About four years ago, uh, I was having a get-together for in honor of my father and a couple of key employees, and we did something, a 17-minute video to honor his life. And just that 17 minutes, the power of something like that, uh, so well, much can be encompassed. It's not in our brochure, and it's not on our website right now, but it will be. We are offering that as a service, too. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, someone like a birthday party, mm -hmm. interview people who know them, put that on tape, put that on videotape, mm -hmm. transcribe those comments, put it in a little memorial book and give it to the the honoree is a right, gift. Right. Or say someone is retiring after so many years with a company. Say you're retiring from Wellman or whatever, 50 years worth of service. Mm -hmm. Well, interview the people that you've worked with, your boss, your co-workers, people who have known you through the years. It could even be in the form of a roast. <laughs> you right, know? sure. Those are popular. Um, little memorial books. Give them to the guest, mm -hmm. the guest of honor. Or if people who were there who took part in preparing it would like a copy, then you could have extra copies. Oh, absolutely. And, of course, one of the benefits of executive service to the PD, I, I assume, is that you've got expert folks working with you mm -hmm. that can help transcribe on a yes, I do. pretty good, quick basis to help you and Tim right. out in the business here to right. really make this move along so that you can take on multiple projects at one time. Exactly. We have women who work for us who mm -hmm. do the transcription. I do transcription, too. I do a lot of that myself. Mm -hmm. We do the printing ourselves, the photographs. We have the equipment. We have the audio tape recorder. And as I said, we have access to getting videos done. Um, any and every part of it. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a big project. If someone doesn't want to take an entire 80 or 90 years' worth of their life mm -hmm. and have it done, we can also do parts of it. We can do... Memoirs are different from a biography. Mm -hmm. It's important memories, mm -hmm. captured glimpses of life, not an entire life, 90 years' worth or 50 years' worth. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be short or long. Mm -hmm. How valuable. Well, I know we've been promoting this website, familymemoriessc.com, but if someone didn't have the Internet, didn't know how to go online or to research this online, would there be a phone number that they could there reach you? There is a phone number, and we have a toll-free number. Oh, great. Betty, tell us what that toll-free number is. Toll-free, it's one eight seven seven eight family Okay. And I believe you've checked to see yeah, what numbers those are. 832-6459 for folks who want Correct. to dial toll-free toll with throughout our viewing area. And, of course, locally, you all have 
the 843 Six six five seven six two zero. Okay, great, good, and of course, familymemoriessc.com is such a great site. You know, lay out so many things. It has a, mm -hmm. a section of frequently asked questions, which is great. And I think I've reviewed some of those, like uh, why should a viewer do a personal history? And right. then, of course, you've laid out many of the reasons why. But how do you get started, Betty? Well, as I tell you, I'm very curious. I'm just snoopy. Anything and everything I can think of to ask, but there we are members of the Association of Personal Historians, which is a nonprofit organization, a professional organization, and they do have lots of help, a lot of suggestions, lots of tips, and they do have lists of suggested questions, and also memory triggers mm -hmm. that you can use mm -hmm. to help someone remember. I might tell you, Greg, what was your grandmother's middle name? And you may know. Mm -hmm. And if you do, sure. tell me who she was named for. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, I might ask, well, Greg, what is your full, complete name? And do you know who you were named for right. and why? Right. Great questions, yeah. Lots Those are of really good, good memory questions. triggers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It really forces someone to go back uh, and to set the stage for you to be able to ask lots of sure. other questions. One of the other things we did, especially for Tim's mom, she had a, a box full of loose photographs, snapshots for the most part. None of them were labeled. Oh, wow. But she knew who they all were. Right. While the tape recorder was on and running, we set that box on the table and pulled them out and talked about those photographs, mm -hmm. who the people were, what the occasion was, about the date. She might remember the year. Right. And then all of the photographs were incorporated into her book. I would have the photograph on one side of the page and the conversation on the other side of the page mm -hmm. so people would know who it was and what was going on. But those are excellent triggers. How valuable. How yes, invaluable. Yes. yes. How exciting, yes. Betty. Yes. This must be thrilling for you and Tim and well, the other folks. I am learning so much about how people lived back, say, the early part of the 1900s. I'm very interested in it. I, I love history. I was excellent in history in school. I love the area that I live in. Mm -hmm. And the people really um, are enjoying remembering these things mm -hmm. and pulling out the mementos. Now, we can also incorporate old documents, mm -hmm. invitations, certificates, wills, deeds, because of the scanner. And we can do full color, black and white, whatever, mm -hmm. and just incorporate those things into the projects. And even those things help trigger other memories, and then you'll have little stories you can tell along and along. Right, right, absolutely. And, of course, you have some samples online. Right. But the real samples, you've got some huge samples. I know you brought one down, which is wonderful. Right. But you, I'd like people to see one of the books that we have done. This is the one we did for Tim's friend. And it has a picture in it of the house he lives in that was built in 1850, a beautiful old country home. He doesn't call it a plantation, but it sure looked like a plantation to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I have a photograph. Um, you and I can look at it, and they can show it on the screen. Oh, yeah. Tim has an aunt who is 90, and we are doing a project for her. Uh, her family, she has five boys. They all want to chip in and help do this. This is a photograph that was hanging on her wall. It was about five by seven. I looked at it and I said, Aunt Ruthie, uh, by any chance, is this you? And she said, yes, it is. She's the young woman holding the baby. Mm -hmm. Standing beside her in the blue dress is her mom. And the two ladies that are seated, her grandmother and her great-grandmother, and you can see off the edge of the page there, a Model T. Yes. This is five generations, and this picture was taken when she was 17. Wow. Now, of course, they did not have color photography in those days. Mm -hmm. Someone along the way had colorized it. Mm -hmm. It was the only one in existence. So I really hesitated before I asked. But then I did ask. She allowed me to take it home, scan it. I had to do a little bit of repair work because it had creases and scratches in it mm -hmm. and blotches in some place. But it turned out real, real well. I have actually printed it on photograph paper, 8 by 10 so that she'll have a copy for each one of her boys. Mm. Golly, that is wonderful, Betty. One last thing. We've only got a, a couple of minutes, a little less than a minute. I wanted to make sure we got in that you've got a, a, a weekly radio talk show right, sure on WOLS AM 
in Florence on Fridays at 11 a.m. Okay. It's live for an hour. We interview just like you're doing here. We usually interview three people, and then it's rebroadcast Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. on WHYM, which is out of Lake City. That's 1260. Okay. That's so a.m. Friday, 11 a.m. on WOLS AM 1230, mm -hmm. and rebroadcast the next morning on WHYM 1260 a.m. Right. So that's for viewers in the PD, they could tune in and, and catch up. Sure. And, do you talk about family memories uh, on the a show? A little bit. We have done some talk about it, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Just interview people about what's going on in our area, kind of like what you're doing on radio. On Everybody the radio. Everybody looks good on radio, Greg. That's exactly right. You heard her say it. Everyone looks good on the radio, and I think if you've been sitting here the last 30 minutes, you'd see an amazing woman who's made an amazing commitment with her husband to really reach deep, reach deep into folks' lives and, and help children and grandchildren and even those folks remember and learn about the lives of so many. Betty, thanks so much for being with us I this morning. I appreciate the opportunity. Greg, thank you. You're doing a great job. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. <laughs> We want to thank Betty Cox and her amazing husband, Tim, for making the trip down today and making a difference in so many lives. Visit FamilyMemoriesSC.com or call 877-8-FAMILY to learn more about family memories.